Hello. Hi. Hi, Duncan. <laughs> ah, Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, oh, good. Hi. How are you? How are you all? I'm good. <laughs> it's it's quite late here, so I'm, trying to stay awake. I'm, I'm so sorry for this to keep you awake. That's good. Yeah, but you know this is uh, a challenge with uh, doing a Zoom call across all time zones. Uh, I mean, I always try to in, accommodate all different time zones, but uh, sometimes it's just impossible to you know uh, accommodate for everyone. So. Um. No, it's. I'm usually awake this this late, but it's. Uh, it just means that I um, I don't have my pajamas on yet, so <laughs> I'm trying to remain formal. Well, I, I hope I make it worth your time, and it's. Uh, uh, you can take something back in return for. Uh, it's good, it's good your to see time. You. What time is it over there? One a.m. I suppose. Um, Twelve thirty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hi, Atinder. I think. I'm just waiting for two, three more people. We it's a okay. small group today. Oh, cool. Hello, so hi, how, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good also. I just came from the department right now, just five minutes Great. before <laughs> where you're for this workshop. I just came today a little bit early. Yeah. Hi, uh, uh I'll well, sh should should I call you Tang or should I call you Owl? What what do people call you? Oh, uh, you can call me Owl. Owl, okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sam. Hi. I'm just I think waiting for two more people. Meanwhile, I I know I think I know all of you. I know Duncan. We've been speaking from some few months now, and Atinder, yes, from a very long time. And I don't know much about you, Owl. I just know you are also into something to do with research and creativity and visuals. That's all I know briefly. I haven't. Uh, uh, so if you could just you know take me through what you do, and uh, meanwhile we'll just wait up for another five minutes for other two to, to join us. Okay. Um, I, I'm just an intern and I work for Weibai okay. at a real studio. Okay. And my major in college is uh, film and drama. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, Duncan or Tinder, can you I mean, also introduce yourselves to each other? Because okay. I wouldn't know everyone, but uh, it, it's good to have a close knit uh, atmosphere yeah. over here. Um, so I'm Duncan. I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand at the moment. Um, I guess uh, really I'm sort of a uh, amateur sort of researcher, ethnomusicologist um, slash producer. Um, yeah, I'm not really attached to any sort of academic institute. Um, pretty much a free agent. So yeah, I mean that's that's what I do at the moment, anyway. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful to have you here, uh, At Atinder. Can you just take us through what you do? I know what you do, so <laughs> yeah. Hello, Atinder, you're on mute. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Actually, my daughter is with me, so she's roaming here and there. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, what do you ask? I, I'm so sorry. I was just asking you to like uh, give a brief introduction to our, our other friends. I know what you do, but uh, others to know what uh, what you do. So just so that it's uh, Okay, okay. I, I just completed my PhD in 2018 and now I'm full-time uh, as assistant professor working with Punjab Agriculture University, Bhutana. And... Uh, uh, in, the in the department of economics and sociology so my research area is basically migration and women left behind and how they cope up with their situations when their husbands are in the gulf so oh. that's why i so i just want to uh, join your workshop to <laughs> because i want to work in uh, in the document as a doc documentary on the women those are staying behind so that okay. i can just capture their moments what kind of family life they have, what kind of everyday life, how they are living there, and what kind of situations they have. So that's why I just joined today. It's a long time I want to join you, Thank but you. I get the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Hi, Gopichan. Hi, Prajosh. Hi. 
Hi, Prajwal. We have a quick round of introduction. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, yes. Can you just introduce yourself? Okay. Yep. Yes, I am Prajosh Kumar from Kerala. So, I am a teacher working in uh, high school. And uh, I am interested in to more about the ethnography. And uh, I am interested in feelings. And uh, I have seen your work, documentary, uh, the ethnography, especially the people and uh, from the tribes and a lot of information to get Thank you. The, uh, yeah hi gopicha yeah hi hi, hi somya hi <laughs> hi to, to all yeah. yes i am gopichan from andhra pradesh and uh, uh, i am studying anthropology and i am very much interesting to study even ethnography and visual ethnography and I have attended uh, one or two sessions of uh, Soumya and it is very much uh, happy and now I am in this session. Thank you. Thank you, Gopijan. I want to learn more uh, about uh, visual ethnography from this session. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Gopijan. Uh, so a quick brief about me. Most of us, you would know, I have, I'm a visual ethnographer. I have a total of 15 years of experience and the last nine, nine and a half years has been into visual ethnography. Uh, though I initially might have started as uh, becoming a documentary or a fiction filmmaker, but that was not my calling. So I transitioned immediately within five to six months into doing visual ethnography or ethnographic filmmaking. So I've been taking workshops uh, when there was no COVID-19. Now I switched over to online medium of taking webinars. So my intention of today's workshop, this is actually my last webinar of 2020. My intention is to uh, teach you and take you through all possible camera shots that we can use during ethnographic observation or any kind of field research. Uh, because ethnographic observation in classic sense can be a very lengthy time consuming uh, medium, but uh, we don't really, uh, we don't always uh, get that much of time uh, when it comes to business or market research to be conducting uh, a such detailed uh, studies. So use of camera, use of uh, um, mobile or digital camera can help us capture a lot of information in a small span of time. So uh, I'll just share my presentation and uh, this presentation will also be shared uh, later on with all of you along with the recording. So here it goes, and uh, feel free to ask me any question post this presentation. One second. Yeah. And I would really request to, uh, if you could just put yourself on mute so that uh, there is no uh, disturbance of any kind for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so. So this is the topic of our today's uh, webinar, how to use the camera during ethnographic observation, which is also called a shadowing in research. Reason we call it shadowing is, is because we are ob observing a participants, uh, people or the users in a more business oriented sense from a distance. And we are sort of acting as their shadow of whatever they are doing, how they are behaving, what their attitudes are. So that is why the word, use of word shadowing. Uh, so these are some of the basic uh, shots. Uh, I'll start with the very simple ones. Uh, wide or long shot, mid shot, mid close up, uh, mid close up, which is also MCU, close up shot, extreme close up and full shot. Uh, we'll just go through this uh, quick video and I'll start explaining as the images progress. Uh, can you all see this or should I make it a little larger? Yeah. Yeah. So we start, this is, um, uh, wide shot, extreme wide. So we initially started with the extreme wide shot in this video. Extreme wide would be uh, the space is more visible and in comparison to the subject. So subject is less visible and slowly the shot is transitioning into a full shot or a wide shot where you see more of the subject or uh, if it was an object then some a particular thing then you would have seen that more but here there are people monks so uh, this is a wide shot because the space is not uh, so much visible we just want to have a hint of the space and then sl slowly uh, we are moving on to this would be a mid close-up shot 
meaning it is uh, made or just formed from above chest level and you can see the shoulder areas and obviously the face this idea of this shot is to focus on the facial expressions and uh, also um, maybe be able to have another bit of a glance of what the background of the subject uh, where they are wherever they are placed is about so this would be a mid close up uh, shot and another idea of this shot is also to introduce not show completely but like to introduce uh, drama in your uh, in photos or in your uh, moving images that is the videos now moving on to this is again a type of wide shot a uh, long shot taken from a side profile so you can have usually you should have a front profile or a side profile if the subject or the participant is engaged in an activity it is always good to have a side profile of that subject if the subject of the person you are capturing is not really doing any activity then front profiling is good obviously never the back profile and this is again we are moving on to uh, this again a full shot this would be an extreme close up shot uh, here we are uh, focusing accentuating completely on the facial expressions and more so going more into the drama of uh, how a person expresses himself or herself or themselves so this is what uh, uh, the extreme uh, close up shot would be like this is again uh, you could say close up so this is another example of a wide uh, shot wide shot is very useful in places where there are a lot of people and uh, it's a huge space and we want to show how people are intermingling or blending into how, how they are presented in a particular space again this is a wide wide shot wide shot is one of the most probably one of the most easiest shots because you could just uh, uh, place the camera at a certain position where you could see uh, your participants or the people that you want to capture Uh, and the space, and you can just alter between wide, extreme wide to very wide, depending on how much of the ratio that is the person and the space ratio that you want to uh, capture. Consider. Again, this uh, would be a closer. So close-ups are very important in case of uh, focusing particularly on things or objects. Like here, uh, we're trying to focus on uh, uh, which is like French fries or something. So, and yeah, this is again a bit closer. And uh, once again, close-ups or extreme close-ups are good when you want to focus not just on the expression but um, how a person expresses or interacts uh, facially with uh, a, a particular product be it facially or be it with the use of their hands or uh, whatever part of the body is has to be, be engaged with the product of the thing and this is uh, and uh, there's one last shot uh, you could consider this as a full shot and a full shot is something where the entire body of a person um, or an animal or a thing whatever you're shooting is visible and there's almost negligent negligent amount of uh, space that is visible you are it's difficult to you know make out it's difficult to understand what sort of space that person might be and you can just have a faint idea so it's like a uh like an introduction into from full shot to one can always go into a wide or a long shot or uh, uh, one can go go into a close up or and um, or extreme close up uh, close up shots so so wide shots are always used like in in, in an establishing sense where you show a space and then you show uh, move back to or uh, showing just the person or showing how they are using something or uh, uh, maybe um, how they are expressing themselves with some product so it's a, always a shot which often comes in between uh, uh, close up shots or full shots so this these are the basic uh, shots that uh, are there now we we'll move on to something which is more little more advanced 
so in that we will start with uh, something called as point of view shot so i will just take you through the text first and give you a brief intro and then we can uh, learn through watching this video so in uh, ethnographic research or ethnographic filmmaking or anthropology reflexivity is one of the very important things and usually reflexivity is uh, mostly it's a thing which is between the researcher and the research that they are conducting but sometimes we should also be focusing on reflexivity between the society and culture that is being studied and its natives how they are uh, having a um, you know an interaction between each other a two way interaction like a bi directional interaction so the entire structure eventually it it eventually ends up forming a cause and effect uh, triangle where uh, each three points of the triangle are sort of having a reflective uh, relation uh, between each other and uh, so um, if you can see this video you just have a look at this video and then we'll move further then there's no sound to this video so here in the as the video begins the point of view is of the camera uh, or the audience who would eventually be seeing this video they are seeing it so they are that is uh, yeah so it is not anyone else's gaze that is in the video so now the gaze or the point of view shifts to these women who are observing the um, the ceremony being performed so the whole idea is to uh, keep changing the uh, point of view and uh, to have more reflexivity understanding reflexivity between the audience and the 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 video or the visuals reflexivity between researcher research society culture being studied uh, and the natives the product and the people using the product that is the users so there are different ways to show a point of view shot and you you can just uh, play around you just have to keep in mind uh, who is the primary observer and what is being observed so we'll just have a look at this uh, remaining of the video am i going too fast or too slow can someone tell me or should i just is it okay Yeah, it's okay for me. Okay. Again, uh, so now this uh, now it's a it's a very tricky post, uh, question, tricky thing to do sometimes, as to um, decide uh, how do we change our gaze because before this uh, shot, this uh, we were or scene we were just looking at uh, women staring at uh, looking observing a ceremony and then we. um directly move on to this person uh, uh, talking about something um about this ethnic group this is gone tribes of bastar that uh, we are seeing over here and uh, so what has happened over here the um the point of view of uh, these women have automatically transferred uh, to point of view of uh, audience that is who are finally seeing these visuals the viewers and what you can do in when you want to make such a transition either you can like here it is a close up shot that has been introduced or you can even introduce a wide shot always keep a establishing shot in between so that it is not confusing as to suddenly how the point of view has changed so uh, as um, so this is what point of view shot is all about and uh, it's useful in uh, ethnographic studies sometimes you can also use it in something called as usability um, testing which or usability studies which is a more qualitative research method and other qualitative research methods wherein we want to capture multiple points of view and uh, yes the three uh, cause and effect uh, points that it includes is researcher and product relation product and user relation and user and researcher relation and here again we just uh, yeah and again the uh, point of view has uh, shifted now to uh, obviously it's it's, a, it's now at the audiences point of view or the cameras point of view that you can call it because camera is the one uh, like a medium of interaction between the the image the visuals and the final audience and this is close up and we are transitioning from mid close up to close up shots this is a ceremony that they perform during the naming of a child so yeah 
Moving on to the next one. Um, this is called over the shoulder shot, and it is uh, very uh, good in um, when you want to have a different perspective. You always go in the field with a certain state of mind, certain perception. But if you want to reposition your perception and trying to understand uh, things from a participant's point of view, you can always start with this shot. Uh, over the shoulder shot basically means the camera is at the is position at the back of the person or the group of people and that from that position you see um what is there in front of the participant so it's more like a um it's more like the participant or the user or the person is guiding you to see something in front of them and you are also observing the relationship of the participants or the person uh, with respect to what they are observing and how they are observing. So it's a very great shot um, um, to understand the participant's perspective. It helps to change the orientation, orient the audience and uh, to show a certain space or thing or action also from their point of view and how it is being uh, observed. As I said, their gaze, the participants or the person's gaze guides us. Uh, it is Eventually, it is their cognitive thinking that uh, is being highlighted. It creates a curiosity in the mind of a researcher or uh, say a camera person or whoever is shooting or whoever is researching as to what they might be observing. So you can see, but you can't really uh, exactly see what they are observing and why they're observing it. What's the relation? Are they known to the space or it's a space or the place new to them? It uh, creates intimacy between the and it can also be used, especially best best time to use this is, for example, is when you are documenting two people in a conversation. Let's say you want to document how people behave in a coffee shop, uh, say, uh, maybe on Valentine's Day, you want to observe a couple's behavior uh, visiting restaurants. So you can always uh, use this shot to create more intimacy. In so one way option is obviously just uh, doing a like a mid close up or a full shot, but then here you can also create more curiosity and intimacy between two people in a conversation by changing the position of camera uh, one time at one behind one person, another time behind another person. So it's a very emotional shot and uh, it indicates a level of connection. So, and uh, finally, when you break through this shot, it signifies that there's a disconnect that has happened, that event or that interaction, that conversation, uh, that observation is over and it's an end of an action and something uh, next, something which might be most related to it, most likely related to it, or sometimes that uh, completely disconnects from it, but is a part, but it's, it's, it's uh, somehow uh, both are a part of a larger picture. So uh, it's always, uh, you can break away from this shot. So we'll just have a look at some of these quick shots. <laughs> So in this shot, we started with this is the celebration of Shivratri. So we started with the with the older shoulder shot, the OTS shot, and eventually the camera started uh, panning. So panning is the next shot that I'll be explaining. But uh, you can also have a look at uh, uh, this shot. This is also an over the shoulder shot, meaning you are just observing from like behind the person that they might be watching something. You don't know what they are watching. But let's assume you want to use, see how people use uh, a certain mobile phone. And uh, so you can just see what you can just observe it from the behind the person, behind the participant. And uh, you can understand their intimacy, their interaction with the product. And what is the emotional connection? What are the cognitive thoughts going on the person? Then you can uh, later on uh, include an interview with the person to know more about how they use the product, why they used it, and what they liked or did not like about the product. So this is what an over-the-shoulder shot is about or the OTS. So yeah, it's tilt shot, uh, not the uh, pan shot. Pan shot comes later on. So. Uh, tilting is very simple, just how we tilt our head up and down. So tilt up would be tilting up your head and tilting down would be tilting, uh, tilting down would be like how you tilt down your head. 
but why it is important or what can it be beneficial for and uh, tilting is similar to the motion of an individual raising their or lowering their heads it is also like an establishing shot meaning where you have to describe a space or a thing on a vertical axis so we would be going up and down and we just want let's say we want to describe a building we want to describe a construction we want to describe a monument or any such thing which is more relevant on a vertical plane or vertical axis now to capture the expression of how space defines and regulates people's life downward tilt, downward tilt can be used especially let's say a construction workers group of construction workers or uh, or anything where a building or a space is more overpowering the people involved in the space that is where we can use a downward tilt shot so for downward tilt we will see this video <laughs> Yeah. So here we can see if it will start in a minute, in few seconds. Yeah. So here we could just see that uh, the construction is going on, and then eventually we could see we could see the large space. We got the idea of how the construction was going on, and later on we when we tilt it down, we could see how, or when it is tilting down, we can see how. the uh, products or different things or different people involved are engaged in that space so here uh, the, the the dependency of the labors can be seen on on that particular space and uh, uh, then we have uh, in order to capture psychological impression of power All or vulnerability and trust, so we can use the upward tilt. So you want to say, let's say a plane taking off or showing a skyscraper or some monument, uh, where we want to give an impression that uh, th there is a expression of power or maybe vulnerability. Or let's, for example, best example is uh, how a plane takes off or shooting how a capturing how an airplane takes off. So which includes trust, which includes power, which also includes vulnerability. uh so maybe you can see the skyscrapers video we're going from down to up which gives gives us an impression that whoever built this this uh, city uh i think this is new york so uh the city has a lot of power um, maybe people who made these buildings uh, or whoever are living or working in these buildings are, are like they trust uh, these building structures or and there's also a sense of vulnerability of being so so up high so this is the upward tilt and the opposite of it is uh, downward tilt you can also use both the upward tilt and downward tilt simultaneously for example you want to just observe people going up and down the lifts or escalators or any uh, situation where in um, this particular shot can be used but uh, the idea is to al always establish which between subject and object which is more overpowering and how are they correlated to each other and uh, moving on to the next okay so now this is the camera pan that uh, we initially uh, saw in the uh, can someone tell me which uh, shot we have a, a brief introduction of a camera pan anyone would like to answer this just a quick question uh suppose uh, there are 10 trees uh, in the sequence uh, with the numbers uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 like 10 if i want to oh, more focus on number 3 tree mm -hmm. uh, i can use the pan shot from starting to ending uh, or ending or something starting to up to 3 or uh, 10 to 3 Yeah, I can no, pan like left to right or right to left. Yeah, what that's what the definition is. But I just wanted to uh, get an understanding uh, that uh, just wanted to ask you that in which uh, shot uh, did we introduce a bit of a camera pan? So over here we introduced camera pan. <laughs> As you see, the camera suddenly started moving from left to right. So this is a camera pan. 
now uh, to explain more in detail about camera pan. So panning is simply, as Gopichan said, a process of moving the camera from left to right or right to left. The camera is um, mostly in a fixed uh, position. And uh, this shot was mostly introduced in early days when in the initial days of filmmaking because the the cameras or the tripods were, used to be very very heavy and it wasn't really always possible for carrying uh, moving the camera with hands uh, physically possible so this shot was introduced so you could just move the axis the camera in fixed position whichever way you want left to right or right to left and again the main purpose is to establish the space and the ob and the objects subjects and action that it constitutes of at a real time yeah. at a real time uh, this type of camera movement is most helpful during ethnographic studies and you can also use it during say uh, usability testing usability research or testing. where usability testing or research is where you just want to see how easy it is for a person to use uh, or your participants to use a particular product uh, so uh, and then focus group discussions and as it helps to observe and understand variety and diversity in correlations how each element in that space is uh, related what is the correlation between uh, the two the it can be the object in the space it can be the subject in the space it can be the object and subject um, yeah, so this is the basic idea of the camera pan shot. And uh, it helps you follow a subject, show passage of time, like time is moving or uh, it always ends up again building curiosity. You wouldn't want to know that what is the next move of the person or the subject that you're following, what would they end up doing? And it also can help introduce or reveal a certain plot point of the next, uh, uh, next course of action or next space um show again simple show pace of action and track movements on a horizontal surface so i'm sorry about that i think i misspelled horizontal so uh so the the it is different uh, from the tilt shot where tilt shot would go up and down on a vertical axis this would go left and right on a horizontal axis so once you see these videos it will be more clearer <laughs> So I have a bad habit of making uh, my parents the subjects in most of my videos and without them knowing it. So they are moving from left to right. So we are showing the space slowly and so there are people and here you can always see that you can see that there are two different kinds of people by their appearance and also again there's a variety and diversity that is included in this shot. Now we'll see this one. Here we are following the, the, the subject of the, these young children. We're starting with the white shot here. You can always use a combination of different shots depending on what is your context, what you're trying to include. Sometimes you just, uh, the subject always guides you as to what uh, shot you can take. So if uh, there was a little pan over here and uh, so, but if I would have moved the camera and uh, um, you know, shown where those young children went and could have seen more what action. Uh, so here I just sort of tried to reveal a plot point and create a curiosity as to uh, they might be doing something or maybe playing, maybe want to, you know, get ready for school or whatever uh, they intend to do. And uh, so uh, th this is uh, what the idea is. Duncan, this is a uh, smart Ram's village. I don't know if you remember this space. All right. Yeah. I, I thought it was somewhere in that area. Yeah. Um, sorry. I just had a quick question. Yes, please. Um, what is uh, FGD? 
What is oh, that? Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's focus group discussion. A focus All right, group okay. discussion would, again, would be when you have a group of people and uh, it's a group where you ask a set of questions to people belonging to the same cluster, same demographics. And okay. uh, you can uh, sometimes uh, focus group discussion. People may be involved in different things, but you still want to have a very informal interaction. So you can maybe use this camera pan where you can have your inter interaction, whatever questions that you want to ask, uh, simultaneously document how each person is engaged with that space. Thank you. Now moving on to another aspect of a pan shot, which is a 180 or 360 degrees pan shot. Uh, so here it means that you are simply rotating a shot or the camera to a 180 or 360 degree arc, depending on how much camera movement is feasible for you in that space. Sometimes space is a major constraint uh, in when you go for a field or ethnographic research. It's good for places like crowded places like farmers market or a religious gathering where you want to uh, have more complexity, add a more, more variety or diversity and you want to change characters and bring in a, like a bit of variety or maybe even diversity in the background. So then you can, uh, in, increase your uh, pan and move it make it 180 or 360 degree depends on your research questions or the context you want to introduce and in, it helps to in, introduce or include a lot of intensity and we also have get to know the uh, homogeneous aspects or homogeneity of diverse emotions behavior thoughts actions and it, that exist in that particular space uh, so if you just have a look again this is again the same shot. so here actually this is a sort of a three almost a 360 degree shot here uh, we can see that this is a religious gathering people have all come from for worshiping lord shiva but there are people from different um, socioeconomic backgrounds or uh, maybe different cultures also and, but they are all connected in terms of the behavior, thoughts, and emotions for their uh, uh, for uh, for because they are followers or devotees of Lord Shiva. So that's the homogeneity that connects them. <laughs> And um, sometimes the if we would have taken a 360 degree shot, uh, the 360 degree shot also helps you to, as I mentioned, it uh, uh, in addition to establishing the diversity and variety in the character subjects and the background that exists. There are maybe different elements in the in the background space that exists and show uh, start with the what is being observed and show the background, show the space. Uh, how each person is related to what is being observed and take it back like a 360 degree take it back to the main context what is being observed here obviously as as in, to make uh, for an example here uh, it was lord shiva's uh, statue or the ceremony that was being observed we then saw how each person is related what's the age group what's the maybe an idea of the demographic that is there and then we would if you would have taken a full 360 degree we would have again come back to uh, uh, showing the lord shiva statue or the uh, ceremony being performed so we are again going back to what is the starting point um, and yes it helps to discover motivation points that are related to a product meaning again we get to see that why people are in a certain space and uh, why they are there why um, like here it all maybe not entirely but it always creates curiosity that in the ceremony maybe people have come out of devotion maybe children have come because their parents have made them come or whatever different reasons so again motivation points as to why someone is engaged in a space or is you know, engaged interacting with the product or doing a particular thing so we can see multitude of people surrounding emotions and thoughts um, in a 360 degree or maybe a lesser or 180 degree uh, pan shot. So this is what pan, two kinds of pan shots are. This is also another pan. This is an example of a 360 degree. So you, you are seeing all the different possible buildings that are there in um, this particular space. So I don't know what space is this, but yeah, so this is almost a 360 degree.
Okay, so these are the two pan shots. Now coming to the another important shot that's the lockdown shot. So again, in this shot, camera's position is fixed. So we, in in this, the difference is we know sometimes what is happening on screen, and we get a hint of what might be happening off screen. Maybe not at too much of a difference, the distance, but happening off screen uh, at a distance fair enough from the where the camera is positioned. So in here, the camera records whatever passes in front of it while also creating a suspense for what is happening off screen, mostly through ambient sounds. Obviously, you can't see uh, once, the, uh, once the subject or the object or the action has passed the camera, but through the sounds, you can always make out that maybe this might have happened. And uh, it helps you to, if it is something that uh, creates curiosity, you can always go ahead further or focus on that what might have happened off screen. Uh, it helps to observe a particular surrounding, which will include prospective users. Uh, in case you decide to introduce or promote your product in that area, you can keep your camera fixed in a position and you can get to know things happening on screen and off screen and you get a hint or idea or understanding of that if that particular area or space is suitable for you to shoot further or record further things. Maybe even if you're a business researcher, market researcher, introduce a product over there. Uh, for example, if we take uh, this video of cars passing by. Here we saw there were different kinds of uh, vehicles. There was an auto rickshaw, there were two wheelers and uh, nice fancy cars also passing by. And it gave us an idea of variety, a diversity of demographics in this particular space. And uh, wherein we can always uh, later on decide that if we want to introduce a product or open a shop or uh, have more research, we can know that if this is the right area for us or not. And uh, so this is another uh, thing that a lockdown shot can help us establish. And it's also good in, uh, for example, if you, let's say if you want to uh, um, start your, open your own shop in a marketplace or a mall, you can always observe your customers uh, with respect to your competitors that uh, um, who's, you know, buying or using uh, products from your possible com competitors. And then later on, develop a persona, understand their behavior of that particular person who's visiting the shop and where they are going after that, which direction, because uh, that would tell you that uh, what other interest, uh, give you a hint of what other interest uh, that person might have. Are they after checking out the shoe shop? Are they afterwards going into buying clothes or are they going into buying, say, uh, groceries? So it's just to give you a faint idea of uh, what the behavior attitude might be like. Um, and uh, again, this is another shot, uh, like most of the shot, it helps you capture the maximum information for the purpose of observation analysis later on. We have, we see what's going on in front of the camera, but we can also hear, understand, get a hint of what might be happening off the camera. And uh, if time permits, we can, uh, uh, you know, further uh, shoot what's happening off the camera later on and or else let it be there because we have, we would have got some understanding of what might have happened off the camera. And uh, another feature is sometimes it gives too much attention to detail on one action. This helps in creating curiosity and later understanding what about the actor. The actors, maybe if there's more than one person, the action taking place and the two things, uh, how the two are connected. Uh, so here uh, we can, we'll just see this video. This is a local dentist in uh, Mathura and so the lockdown shot is just shot, the camera is fixed 
and we are for a long time would be observing. So maybe you might be wondering this, how it might be different from a full shot or a lockdown shot. So one difference can be definitely in the terms of time, in a lockdown shot, we can give more time and we can uh, use it more for a detailed observation of small, small nuances, small, small changes that might be occurring in that particular shot. And uh, so the focus eventually becomes more on the action and as compared to in a full shot, the focus uh, comes, it's sort of equally divided between the subject and whatever action they might be doing or, uh, or not doing. Um, we will quick have a quick look, quick look at this last shot because our last uh, uh, video, we, uh, because this is an actual example of, or, or rather a proper example of a lockdown shot. This is not a memory. The books were even learned how to film a cartoon scene in an improvised manner. In this video, we're going to talk about how to execute the types of shots using the cartoon scene. And that type of shot for the day is the lockdown shot. This acts like a surveillance camera or a witness capturing the moments happening to the world in raw actions. It gives out expectations on what will happen next. Here's how to do it. The camera on the tripod is positioned where the action will take place. The camera is in still frame and waits for the moment to take full time actions. No matter what the subject cars do or whenever they pass by, the camera stays stationary and is recording in the same position from the beginning to the end. The camera is seeing all the action. It's locked down and just sits there, not giving a flying damn about what's happening. To know more about all the prepper. Yeah, so as you could understand from this video, the idea of a lockdown shot is to place the camera at, at a position. Uh, and it'll be at the same position and uh, the, the, like the cars are passing through a subject or the object would pass through the camera. After that, uh, it's a gamble. We would not know where the, the object or the subject, which direction they go. So it uh, also gives you more curiosity. And again, through the use of amb through ambient sounds, we can get a certain hint as to what would have been the next course of action for these cars. Maybe did they bang into each other, or maybe did they stop or something, or maybe did the person or the object or subject just went into a different direction. So uh, it's like an, also like a, a curiosity or establishing shot. So this is what a lockdown shot can help us achieve. Uh, again, wide more uh, description on wide or long shot and already described this, but a quick recap. When you want to observe and capture the user and product interaction, which is uh, cognitive, emotional and behavioral. So we want to understand how someone is placed, uh, how they are observing and how they're interacting with the space. And sometimes when you want to observe and capture how a person and or a product is placed in a surrounding, uh, just placement and then thereafter also or uh, in addition to that, how they are interacting or observing that particular space. Uh, you can also understand users' body language and behavior with respect to the surrounding. And when you want to understand what other products and services exist in the surrounding to look for possible competitors or even allies, that if you are a company, want to introduce a shop, open a shop, you can just see or uh, here, this is possible. Like here, I will have my competitors and here, if I open my shop here. Uh, this is for, pur for purpose of market research or business research or here, it would be good for me, more beneficial. And sometimes uh, when you also want to understand how non-users, when I say non-user, there'll be people who are not having a direct uh, interaction, but it's still their presence or uh, would uh, matter in the case of how they are behaving, interacting with the product. For example, if we see uh, this shot uh, here, this is a shot of Merico around a Ferris wheel. Uh, so obviously the main participant or the user people to focus on would be the children. And that, uh, the, 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 it is their relation or the observation that we have to eventually focus on. But it is also important to focus on how their parents are behaving in that space or uh, how their parents are interacting with their own uh, children. So this is what a wide shot can do. In this, the frame rate has been has reduced. Uh, uh, that's why it's moving uh, fast. And here is another example. This is also a wide shot, but from a top angle. So there are uh, angles can depend on top, bottom, sideways, depend on what you want to capture. Uh, yeah. Again, one second. So these are some images of wide shots. 
we are going from like this would be the one extreme right below this is a wide shot and then uh, this uh, can be a very wide shot uh, or maybe extreme wide again depends upon how much of uh, the, the the subject or the space that you want to eventually cap show, showcase depends on the context of your research or your research question uh, coming to the final shot uh, of uh, for today this is zooming in and zooming out which uh, like some of mo most of us would know can someone tell me what do you understand by zooming in or zooming out in a very basic sense not in the context of camera anybody would want to take a call it's pretty simple it's uh, zooming in and zooming out i'm sure most of us might have used it we all use mobile phones or we also use zooming in and zooming out on our desktops and laptops would someone want to take a call at what it might be hello uh, up to my knowledge if we want to study the subject uh, uh, more details uh, so we have to make it zoom in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the vice versa is zoom out mm -hmm. anyone else would want to say in, uh, add on anything in addition to this owl i you're an intern at uh, uh, i I'm, i i assume you might have an idea of zooming in and zooming out oh i think this is a basic technique used in um, early cinema. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't need to move the camera, you just need to change the focus and so you can um, focus on certain part of the image um, that's zoom in. And if you want to have overall view of the uh, environment, you can zoom out. Yes, yes, Ab absolutely. Uh, thank you for that out. So that, yes, that's the purpose of uh, zooming in and zooming out to give an impression of moving closer or to magnify or accentuate or focus more, focus more on a particular product or a thing or an action happening. And when you move, that's zooming in and uh, the opposite of it, that zooming out would be when you are already focusing on an action or object or uh, maybe uh, people talking or some subjects and you zoom out uh, when you suddenly go into what the environment or the background is like so yes used to magnify a part of the shot with an attempt to create a point of focus or a sudden difference in perspective so uh, so when we are basically changing the focus and the focus or the focal length changes and the perspectives also change let's have a look at this shot for understanding how it changes different perspectives so as you can see, we are starting with two young women, young beautiful women. They are doing something engaged in different activities, but we don't know where they are. We just can see they both ordered uh, their own uh, option of beverage or coffee. Uh, and one is uh, engaged. So this is basically, we can say that it gives us an idea as to this might be some sort of a co-working space because um, they both seem to be engaged in, on something and then we further see the shot and this is zooming out happening so slowly we can see oh yes they are at some coffee shop or at some restaurant and this is the coffee sh or this is what the coffee shop or the restaurant looks like or, or this can maybe be uh, not a coffee shop or a restaurant this can maybe be one of the co-working spaces cafeteria or maybe a company's cafeteria but uh, that's always a uh, up for curiosity we'll always get to know once we interact more uh, have an in-depth interview or uh, maybe observe other things in that space but this is a zoom out uh, would that, this is how a zoom out would look like so it helps to go from general to specific and specific to general in this particular shot we went from specific uh, focusing on these two women and general and then when, when we zoomed out we could also see oh yes there's another uh, man also here and so we understand that the space is not just for young women or young people this has a diversity or a variety of uh, people coming over here so this can maybe be a office space and so zooming in would be something like this 
where we are showing the buildings, the space, the environment, and then this curiosity of the structure at a distance we can't know, and then suddenly we are zooming in into trying to focus on what this structure is like, and what is it made of, and uh, what it what what its elements are like. So it helps you focusing on one single product when there are already exist a variety and diversity of product. So suppose we are using a pan shot, we are showing different products uh, that are there and uh, then suddenly we want to focus on one particular product which maybe is of prime importance to us, maybe we're in, uh, maybe something that we want to improve through an iteration process and uh, something that we want our audience to have more attention on so we can suddenly zoom in. So, which is something like this. We are doing a pan here first. So sometimes zooming can also be used uh, next to a, a moving shot. So that's what has happened. We just panned, just we first showed the space, what it looks like, what a different set of plants uh, are there. And then we suddenly focused on uh, these uh, plants. I don't know what these flowers are. So, uh, so I'm sorry about that. So, uh, but yeah, that's what zooming in would be. It can be used at a fixed position, zooming in or zooming out or we can all combine it with a some of a with a pan shot mostly or uh, maybe we can always come also combine it with a till down a till down shot or maybe not always with a tilt up shot but for surely with a till down shot where again we want to focus on uh, extremely on the uh, action taking place or on the subject or a particular thing that is there in that space so it helps you transition from recording the space to the person and action being performed and finally back to the product. So it can be a two way uh, thing. So I suppose we don't have much time. We just want to focus. We just have, let's assume we just have a day to capture uh, what we are researching and include uh, whatever elements are there in the space. So this is a shot we can use. We can just show the space and then in the white shot or in a pan shot and the person that is there and whatever they are doing and move back to and move back and forth. So uh, that's uh, what zooming in and zooming out can do. Um, so let's have a quick exercise, uh, fun exercise. It's easy and I would really, uh, it'd be nice if all of you could answer one by one. And uh, so can someone tell me what are these shots? So you can pick any one shot and just tell me uh, what are these shots? Which one is it? Anyone can answer. This is like a fun exercise just for us to uh, be more interactive in the session. You just have to name the shot and maybe tell uh, me you think it's that particular uh, shot. Close up shot? Yes, please. Yes, please, Duncan. Uh, close up shot, the uh, second one, and also the number six. Okay, so this man uh, sketching and this child, basically. That's, that's mm, what it's. Mm. Okay, and why do you think it's a close up shot? Uh, because it's uh, it zoomed in on on him as the the main focal point uh whereas it's it's in a room but it's uh it's sort of crop to his activity okay uh anyone That's else would to, yeah great so uh anyone would else would want to answer this what's what shot um are these the ones the duncan says the second one and the sixth one are close-up shots anyone would wants to say something else or Maybe maybe something same similar. Uh, <clears throat> the person who is sitting and writing something that is uh, mid, mid mid shot. Okay. Okay. Why shot? Yeah. And next one, uh, man and woman. That is also middle shot, front side. Yeah. Okay. What about the ladies, Atinder and Aul? Do you want to say something, Atinder? You want to add on? Or Prajosh, anyone wants to add on something maybe about this lady and the child or maybe these uh, um, um, unfinished uh, statues? 
the lady is i think long shot okay what about uh, aul or atender atender would you want to say something what, what do you think uh, actually what i thought this was the zoom in shots this one the last one the the baby he's the, some something he's eating okay what, what about you prajosh hi prajosh Okay, uh, our would you want to uh, take a say? What uh, shots do you think these are, or maybe you can pick any one and talk talk about it? Uh, I think the first one is also a close up shot. Okay, this man with the musical instrument. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other you want to uh, you want to talk about? Um. I think the third one is uh, middle shot. Can I call it middle shot? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, guys, uh, the first shot, this one is a mid. Uh, it's uh, somewhere between a close up and a mid close up shot. A mid close up is something where in the bottom uh, axis or the focus or the um, point of the of the image being formed starts somewhere between the person's chest and shoulder. so and this is obviously side profiling of the person so this is a mid close up shot the second one is a mid middle shot and uh, a little uh, less uh, middle shot and uh, yes this third one is exactly a middle shot where a middle shot is uh, starts uh, somewhere between uh, stomach area and chest uh, area that's where the the bottom part of the the image would be placed this lady with the child is a middle shot these marionettes are also uh, these marionettes are i would still take uh, include them in the uh, middle shot but if uh, i would have placed the camera starting from their legs or the knee area then this is something called as cowboy shots which is used a lot in uh, i mean i've seen them being used a lot in hollywood movies uh, like old hollywood movies and this child eating which is who's eating a stone uh so he uh he, this is a uh, again a middle shot because the shot is formed from his chest level up so these are varieties of middle and middle close up shot and how where you place your camera it, whether it should be a middle shot or a middle close up or a cowboy or something in between a middle and a middle close up uh, it depends again what you are want to showcase what you want to capture what is being what is happening the, that is the what is the action happening so this is uh, this exercise now we have another exercise one second one second guys i think my yeah okay okay so if you can see this uh, now exercise 2 what are these shots Who would like to go first? Maybe I can ask Prajosh to go first. If you he can hear me, hello, Prajosh, hello. You're on mute. Okay, so I think uh, probably can't hear me. Uh, so anyone would would like to take a call at what are these shots? You can pick any one and talk about it. and there is a red color image with with the boy face uh, that is <coughs> close up shot okay uh, and side 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 uh, way side angle okay uh, right what about you prajosh do you want to uh, take answer which what are these shot you can pick any one or two images and uh, uh, i think the first one is the close up shots uh the one this Hello. first yeah. one uh so parts are there parts that is uh, what i think wide shot okay can you tell me why, why do you think it's a wide shot Would you like 
to answer why do you think it's a wide shot it's okay to uh, think it's a wide shot it's your perspective but uh, it would be you know nice to, to tell all of us that why do you think it's a wide shot because i can see a lot of parts covering uh, space there uh, so more parts and covering some large area that's the thing what i'm thinking yeah yes atinder uh, you want to yeah i also think that the second one is the wide shot because it, sh- it shows so many pots and the large area and the last one in which some decorative piece is the close up shot the last one okay uh, what even the this leaves yeah. also it shows something mm-hmm. it is also the closest one matlab I mean, close shots what i think Okay. A man and a woman is there. That is also close-up shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mostly close-up shots. Duncan and Aul, do you want to take a call on any of these shots? What What do you think? What are they? Um, I think the the pots is the um. Mm. I forget the names you use for them, but the um, like when you had the the pictures of the um. the building like the up and down um yeah cuz sort of gives a, a scale of the the height of it so what do you what do you think this might be yeah i forget the name of the the up and down okay the, shot, so the, tilt, the tilt yeah. up and the tilting tilt up and tilt down tilting sorry yes yes oh, okay yes yeah, so i think that uh, that feels more like a tilted shot to me Okay. Uh, what about you, Owl? Do you want to answer for any of these shots? What do you think? Which what which one is it? Uh, I think the first and the set. Uh, the first and the third, the fourth and the last one are all close-up shots. And uh, the second one, um, I'm a little confused about the second one. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think it might be? Like the first impression, the first thought. I think it's uh, um maybe it's a uh, it's a uh, <laughs> um middle shot okay um okay fine um, one just... one more yeah i there is i can find there is an extreme close up shot the jewelry uh, the last one jewelry there is an item i think it is covering total frame I think that is an extreme close-up shot, not normal close-up. I am thinking that. I don't know. <laughs> yes, uh, Prajwash, you want to say something? Yes, uh, I think the first one and the, the last one. These are the close-up close-up shots. Okay. Okay. And the man and the man and woman, mm-hmm. and uh, these are the close-up shots. okay uh, so uh, yes the um, the last shot this jewelry this is zardozi work uh, it's a kind of embroidery in a famous in uh, north of india states of north india so this is extreme close up meaning the entire covers the entire frame and we can see in detail almost in detail uh, as to what the embroidery is like and uh, here uh, uh, this first shot is somewhere in between uh, it's a, it's again a close up shot and if you would have gone more closer it would have become become an extreme close up shot yes this young boy covered in uh, red uh, color on holy uh, this is also a side profile of a and a close up uh, shot and as i said earlier close up shots help us to establish uh, facial expressions and emotions uh, and like a drama as to uh, yeah as it is basically also used for an actor's point of view how actors uh, show expression and again this uh, couple is also a uh, close up close up shot and now uh, these are and th- these are red ants this is also again a close up shot if i would have gone more closer it would have become uh, extreme close up so in extreme close up uh, we highlight on the details in that shot like how it is happening in this piece of embroidery 
and here in the ants it would have gone much closer but it was it was not a, a safe thing to do to go close to these red ants so this ended up being a close up uh, shot but yes uh, if possible sometimes you can use in zoom in and zoom zoom uh, out uh, feature where in, uh, you could have just one i mean we could i could have just seen uh, yes what are these ants doing and no other element would have been visible like here how only this piece of cloth or piece of embroidery is visible now coming to the set of pots this is actually like a, you could say this is a close up shot it's not a wide shot because here only the element that is the that is the pots are being visible not the space you can really not make out much of what the space is like uh, if, if it would have been and this is taken from a top angle uh the camera was on a tripod and we tilted it uh, like down like showing a top angle uh and then uh, the shot was taken if the camera would have been little further away or uh, then or maybe um, focal length would have been different uh, maybe more then this would have become a wide shot because we could also see the space but until then this can be called uh, can also fall under the purview of or under the close up shots so this is what the uh, different close up shots can be and before that we also learned about a different kind of uh, wide shots or or different shots so this is what all from my side guys this is the presentation now if anyone can ask me the questions that you might have so the floor is open for all of you. you can just ask different whatever questions comes to your mind hi soumya i have a question yes. uh, can you please uh, tell me uh, what is a subjective shot and objective shot this is basically uh, like how uh, there's no shot as such called subjective shot or objective shot but subjective and objective is uh, how do i say it's how you uh, focus or take a shot so when we say subjective it means that you are focusing on the subject and you're trying to understand uh, things from its point of view making it more subjective and when you are when you take things capture things in a objective form it means that you're not trying to understand a particular thing or an action from a person's human's point of view <laughs> intervention of behavior attitude you are just uh, observing a particular uh, thing like for example these spots this can be this can fall under objective shot or or objective um, uh, perception when there is no human intervention and you are uh, trying to observe things uh, from a very unbiased or sort of view so as a camera person as someone behind the camera it is very uh, you when you form a shot it is impossible to say to have complete objectivity always because you would uh, and that's a challenge uh, that you would always uh, come across and you have to like it eventually would come with practice not to uh, take shots from a very objective or biased point of view and here in this shot is a let's say it's a subjective one this camera uh, there's a subjectivity interaction of uh, the subjectivity of the camera person or the director or whoever is and also the subjectivity of these two people the couple so that's a subjective uh, and objective aspects of shots okay yeah and i have one more question uh actually can you please tell me uh, if any ethnographic research do the researcher should have uh, the cinematic uh, knowledge like uh, cinematography knowledge like shots and angles and all this kind of stuff uh just an ethnographer yeah uh not necessarily the process of the of using visuals is uh, trying to so more information more details to understand behavior spatial expression other uh, ways and uh, so uh, but uh, so and it's a it's a medium that is getting more prominence from past uh, some years now so it just it's a uh, so as it now ethnography is both a process and an output adding visuals would be good in both the uh, process uh, and also the final output okay yeah anyone else uh, so any question guys uh, you can feel feel free to ask anything uh, i have a question 
Yes. Uh, I would like to know uh, what lens are you using in different kind of situations? Okay. Uh, I mostly use uh, the wide, the, the 50 mm and uh, I use uh, 24105 because uh, it has a good range of uh, having a more variety in shots and I, uh, I sometimes, it depends on where I'm going, what my space is like, uh, so, but uh, the, these are the two more pro prominent shots. Um, two prominent lenses that uh, I use. So I, so my, I basically, I, uh, my job is that of a researcher, ethnographer, director. There is always someone else doing, like doing the, uh, taking the camera shots uh, in my work because it is always difficult to take the interviews, do the observation, the ethnographic research, anthropological study, and also use the camera. But yes, these are the two lenses that we mostly use. Uh, sometimes uh, we also use uh, shots for. Can you repeat the name of the uh, uh, lenses that 50 mm? Yeah, yes, yes. And second one? Uh, 24, 105, uh, 105. 24? 105. 105. I'll, I'll obviously, I can share it later on through email or through other media. Uh, yeah. But, yes, and uh, I've also used uh, 7300, which uh, was used uh, in uh, uh, my last project uh, for uh, recording the tribes of gone tribes of Basta, so because there was a lot of jungles, a lot of white shots, a lot of um, we had to, and it's it's also another great shot which you can use if you want to do something uh, as a covert ethnography where you don't want to be caught. So uh, yeah, any uh, Duncan? It's really uh, good. Uh, gone gone the tribe uh, ethnographic film. I saw it is a really excellent film. Soumya. Thank you. Uh, Duncan Prajosh, any questions uh, from your side? Uh, feel free. Um, I, I just had a, a question, um, not so much a technical question, but um, when you are in an observant position, how um, do you have any sort of advice on how to avoid uh, the subjects acting in a way that's um, exaggerated or performative or unnatural hmm. um, to what to the situation that you're filming or recording absolutely so that's this is one challenge uh, even when uh, especially when there's a camera involved because the subjects they either tend to shy away become very conscious or they over dramatize this is the two possibilities that can happen, especially when the camera is there. So our responsibility is before we start using the camera to build a rapport. And uh, I would prefer building a rapport if possible through participant observation that is involving ourselves in the activity that they are doing, trying to just get a basic understanding of why they are doing it, what is, uh, trying to be more human, more empathetic uh, in uh, trying to understand the, the people that we want to capture and how they are presented in the space. And then, bring it on gently to them that uh, yes we would want to capture it and telling them it's all about being honest uh, just telling them that why do you want to document them and uh, take you know record them uh, make a video of them or take a photograph and what will it help uh, it is always important to make them feel important in a in a way that uh, their uh, ideas thoughts their um, whatever they say or whatever they're doing, it would matter eventually in a larger context. And uh, gen just gently bringing in the, introducing the, introducing the camera. And uh, also when you take interviews, uh, we should avoid placing the camera. Uh, th there's a, uh, I'll share, I think I've already shared the link of where to place the camera when taking visual ethno, visual interviews, interviews and ethnographic research. But just a quick recap, we should never place, uh, put the camera right in front of uh, the uh, audience or the, or the participant because uh, Facing the camera can, as I said, go two ways, over dramatization or shying away or being conscious of answering. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, uh, Prajosh or Atinder, anyone, any other question? Soumya, uh, what is your next project and uh, how many members are working in your team? Right now, that in COVID, I have, there's no project happening at the moment. I don't know when my next project will happen, but it is uh, scheduled to, it is going to be on the Tamang tribes of Sikkim. 
that's in northeast of india okay uh, okay how many members uh, you are having to support you to your project like uh, a cameraman and uh, any crew right now i don't have any members because uh, uh, my it would eventually uh, members would be decided when uh, i would have funds and when i would have people to uh, when when covid goes away so there, there are two challenges at the moment for this project okay okay yeah uh, prajwesh would you would you like to ask something Uh, another 10 minutes guys feel free to ask anything that comes to your mind i will share this presentation this recording to you guys uh, somya uh, samya actually i have one camera that is canon camera ti6 okay. so uh, actually we bought it but uh, the thing is that i don't know how to make a uh, change the this uh, configuration that just say uh, that you told about the close up and uh, the larger shots one uh, one of time we click uh, we uh, we click the photographs of this uh, in mumbai of this uh, what we have filmingos but in the camera it shows very good but when we uh, put it in the laptop it showed very that that we clicked from a very far away it uh, the 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 clear the picture is clear but uska jo wo aaya na print kind of uh, पिक्चर जो हमने उसको लैपटॉप में देखा तो इट शोज दैट इज अ वेरी फ्रॉम वी क्लिक इट वेरी फार अवे बट दो वी आर वेरी नियर टू द दिस फिल्मिंगोस सो आई जस्ट वांट टू नो दैट हाउ वी कैन डू द सेटिंग्स एंड हाउ हाउ कैन वी क्लिक दिस काइंड ऑफ फोटोग्राफ्स बिकॉज दो इट्स वेरी क्लियर इन यू आर प्रेजेंटेशन दैट विच वन इज अ वाइडर विच वन इज अ क्लोज वन बट ड्यूरिंग ऑपरेटिंग आर कैमरा हाउ कैन वी uh take make the adjustments in the camera okay so for this i would have to actually see the camera because uh, all most cameras have some bit of difference in the functionality yeah and uh, so it's difficult to answer at the moment but uh, maybe to uh, your voice is uh, okay so yeah so it uh, depends uh, if it, from camera to camera there's always a different function uh, functionality to uh, each uh, camera but to begin with it's always maybe uh, so start on auto mode so uh, uh, so what you can do is initially start on auto mode and uh, for taking the shot physically move closer or further like that but once you get to understand how shot is formed how to frame it once you understand framing properly closer wide or whichever lockdown whichever way and then mm -hmm. we can move into playing around with the camera because first it is important to understand from a aesthetical aesthetics point of view how to form a shot then go into the technical details okay okay and if we want to do a video uh, like we want to cap capture something like a uh, that uh, natural sites or whatever the natural uh, settings if some uh, for example if i am a field worker i want to uh, want to video videography of this uh, natural settings then uh, do we need a mic so that we can capture the video uh, this uh, voice also to the so yeah. that, uh, yes absolutely so uh, see if you are taking an interview then uh, you can just uh, take a recorder hire rent out a recorder like say you can use uh, uh, zoom uh, is one company zoom h6 h4n or whatever suits your budget and uh, then you can uh, you or use uh, maybe roland anything or maybe a simple you can if you are more than one person if you don't have enough budget you can take a simple recorder uh, you get it online also maybe use your uh, recording app in your phone and so uh, just place it next as close as possible and try to take these interviews especially if you don't have you no know, good enough equipment sometimes it is to avoid unnecessary sound we can do interviews for example in a <laughs> Yeah, it is not. Uh, but if you want to capture, say, a, you know, a dance performance or a large event, then yes, you have to capture more more sound, and uh, it will be easy to work later on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take uh, your so advice also. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mia, can you please send me the mail? 
regarding the camera configuration if i want to buy a camera what is the best uh, camera uh, see, company I, I, camera I, I, I would suggest personally i would suggest i i don't have a camera for sale but i always rent it out so i think you one should always uh, go for uh, depending on what sort of a you want to make and just have that understanding you want to make just documentaries so buy according uh, uh or uh, maybe want to if you want to um, have just take just photographs then a simple camera would suffice because i would always suggest that instead of focusing on technical and having a fancy camera or expensive camera or not so expensive camera it's most important firstly to understand aesthetics and vision and how to establish those shots technical uh, learning as uh, details can always come in later on a lot of most okay. lot of good cam documentary or ethnographic filmmakers or photographers sometimes uh the camera that would have been used was it would be very basic but uh, how the, the aesthetic sense adds more value okay Hello. yes prajosh Hello. Uh, is there any yes, uh, ethnographic festival in india conducted in hello uh in india ethnographic festival that i know of uh, i don't know atinda do we have anything uh, to do with ethno visual anthropology or visual ethnography in india no i don't think so we have yeah i yeah i i don't think so <laughs> we have any such festival in india i mean yes such things can be sent to uh, documentary film making festivals yes because they are quite similar to documentary films uh but yeah there's a slight this little bit of difference in execution and ideation but uh, there's no uh, you and there are a lot of your voice is breaking uh, films ethnographic uh, films yeah voice hello. is breaking ah uh, yes hello yes hello yes yes i can hear you 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 are doing uh, a lot of uh, films especially in ethnographic films hmm hmm yes so how you you could how how you will show the films in the people or the audience okay so you can showcase these films uh, as i said you can send them to documentary film festivals yes that is where these films can be accepted if they match the theme of the festivals then you can showcase them into to uh, independent screenings and art and cultural centers maybe you can also showcase these films are more academically oriented and yes it is always good to have uh, uh, some uh, you know a proper shot and not just make it like a classic conventional academic uh, film and uh, it can be showcased in that's, that's what i do to my films they're screened in different academic institutions also whoever shows an interest especially institutions which are teaching social sciences sociology anthropology or something similar maybe tribal studies or folk studies that is where these films can also be screened because the idea of these films eventually is a uh, uh, pro is promotion it's the uh, archiving it's uh, documentation okay so that's what the intent yeah someone else wanted to ask something yeah uh, there is a nomads film festival is going on every year in new delhi uh, I, i saw in google nomads film festival where it is Uh, they, they conduct in new delhi every year we can google it nomads film festival yes okay yes we can upload our films to them and there is a team they are conducting especially nomadic tribes and semi nomadic tribes and uh, documentary films on those tribes this is only on uh, nomadic and semi nomadic yeah okay so uh, probably last five minutes guys any last questions are all done yes yes oh sorry not yes out uh do you have any recommendations about the documentaries especially um which can apply as anthropology series uh you want me to suggest uh, documentaries which are already there or uh, like i mean i didn't understand the question actually oh okay the question it means i um i would like to know your personal taste about uh, documentaries um especially something to do with your with your major 
Okay, so some things were documentaries that I like to watch. Yeah. Okay, so I have a, a wide variety of uh, taste. I mostly, obviously, go without saying, I like to watch documentaries where there is uh, element of uh, culture in it, or uh, people and culture and societies, and anything to do with culture. It can be on music or dance, or uh, any any ethnic group, uh, modern society. Or a traditional society that is one uh, something that I like to watch I like to watch uh, documentaries which are experimental in nature uh, say Baraka or Samsara like that and uh, a lot of experimentation with the shots sort of experimentation with the aesthetics and uh, the vision uh, I'm not uh, so much of a fan of uh, political <laughs> documentaries to be honest um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I just, I always feel uh, that they uh, are made, which is, that is what the intention is, but I feel that uh, they're always made with a point of bias. And, uh, uh, and as, but as long as uh, uh, they are open, they're always open-ended, open wherein uh, the intention is not uh, for the audience to go back home, uh, taking away that bias or trying to change a the mindset, then I'm okay with the political documentaries. Other and I, I like documentaries where there's a lot of environment uh, shown or uh, issues, environmental issues or climate change issues. So I have a wide variety of taste. So no, not, nothing specific as such. But yes, uh, this is what I would always enjoy. I'm always up for documentaries which are about where I can learn about different cultures or societies. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, guys, I think uh, uh, that should be it. And this, if you have more questions, you can always mail me. Uh, my number is also there. My All my social media accounts are there. You can always email me and ask if you have more questions, uh, anything uh, related to what I taught. And you can also always take our time whenever possible, go through the other links I've shared. Uh, there are, I've taught previously about how to use a camera during interviews how visual ethnography can be useful in business research if you would want to look into that and uh, uh, so and, and today's uh, presentation so these are three four of uh, workshops and webinars that we conducted you can ask me question from any one of it whenever you've gone through it so that's all from uh, my side uh, thank you for uh, being here thank you thank you for joining me and uh, bearing with me for the for past what 90 odd minutes Thank you. And yeah, thank you, Soumya. Yeah. Thank you. thank you for your time. And I would really appreciate if you could just uh, give me a shout out on LinkedIn, preferably, uh, where it will help me also to, uh, you know, reach out to more people and uh, have in, just introduce my work. So it'd be really helpful. So to give me a shout out on, uh, preferably on LinkedIn. All, all right, guys. Uh, thank you for yeah, your time. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will email the all the uh, this recording uh, today or by tomorrow latest. Okay, bye guys. Okay. Have a great yeah, day. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you for being here. Bye.